Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to scientists discover planets more habitable than Earth. Don't know how true this actually is because I feel like I see this kind of stuff said every fucking other day. But at the end of the day, I don't actually know how true it is. But I'm here for it, if that's the case. I mean, I'm all ears and that's why I'm reacting to this. But I don't know how true it actually is. But yeah, we're going to check this out anyway. Hopefully you're going to enjoy. Uh, yeah, link's also in the description Just to, to my Patreon where you can see reactions to movies tv series all that good stuff that i can't post to youtube and yeah let's jump into this about 30 years ago we didn't have any scientific proof of a planet outside our solar system today wait how long ago a planet outside our solar years ago we didn't what have just about 30 years ago what 30 years ago we didn't know that we didn't have any Mad. scientific proof of a planet outside our solar system Today, thanks to advances in technology and scientific research, we've discovered over 5,300 exoplanets, alien worlds that are out there waiting to be explored. At first, <laughs> these discoveries mostly involved large gas giants, but as our capabilities have expanded, we've started to uncover smaller Earth-like exoplanets. Scientists have already found more than 50 exoplanets with masses similar to Earth and over 800 worlds with radius less than one half times that of Earth. Damn. We don't know of many such planets orbiting in the habitable zone of their parent stars where the conditions are just right to support life, but that's already starting to change. As our search for habitable planets continues, we're beginning to discover entire planetary systems with more than one potentially habitable world. And we already know about at least one such system in our cosmic neighborhood. Come on. Our Milky Way galaxy has numerous compact systems that are centered around stars similar to our sun. However, planets orbiting closely to these stars are usually too hot and therefore unsuitable for supporting life. But when it comes to colder, fainter stars, the habitable zone around such stars is much closer. This is Gliese 667, a triple star system located in the constellation of Scorpius, just about 23 light years from Earth. It contains just about 23 light years, not that far, you know, just 23 light years away. The first known example of a system where a low mass star has multiple potentially habitable rocky planets orbiting within its Goldilocks zone. Similarly to Alpha Centauri, the system has three stars. GJ667A is a K-type main sequence star and the largest one in the system. This orange red dwarf has a mass of 73%, a radius of 76%, and a visual luminosity only about 12% that of the sun. At an average distance of 12.5 AU is its companion GJ667B, is also a K-type orange red dwarf, about 69% the mass of the sun, and it radiates just about 5% of our star's visual luminosity. And just like with Alpha Centauri, the most interesting is the third star. Gliese 667C is an M-type red dwarf with- I wonder how small it actually is compared to like the UK, the UK, <laughs> the Earth, <laughs> the fucking UK. The mass and radius, only a third of the sun. <laughs> It's also incredibly faint and a comparatively cold star with a surface temperature of 3,775 Kelvin. It's quite chilly then, you know, you sit in front of it and be all right. Yet, despite its small size, GJ667C has a surprisingly rich planetary system. Initially, scientists thought there were only three exoplanets orbiting Gliese 667C. But after revisiting existing data and making additional observations, they discovered there may actually be six planets in the planetary system, with three or even four of them being potentially habitable super-Earths. So what exactly is a super-Earth? <coughs> the term is used to describe a planet that's larger than Earth, but not quite as large as the gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn. These planets can be made up of rock or a mixture of rock and ice, and they may have atmospheres that could support different life forms. The closest planet to the star, Gliese 667cb, is a scorching hot world at 200 degrees Celsius. Being the most massive one in the system, about 5.5 times that of Earth, this exoplanet probably has a very thick atmosphere and orbits its host star in just seven days. The three potentially habitable planets in the Gliese 667 system are all located further away from their host star. 
and they all have masses between one and five times that of Earth, making them great candidates for habitability. Gliese 667 CC, the next closest planet, orbits in the inner edge of the star's habitable zone. It has a mass about 3.8 and a radius 1.8 times that of Earth, and its year lasts just 28 Earth days. Wow. With the Earth Similarity Index of 0.85, it's known as the Holy Grail of extrasolar planets. Because of the low energy output, the habitable zone around the red dwarf GJ667C is located very near to the star, ranging from 0.11 AU to 0.23 AU, and is entirely contained within the orbit of Mercury. To compare, wow. Earth is located at about 1 AU from the Sun. Our planet would be an ice world if it orbited star C at that distance. Jeez. GJ667CC orbits its parent star eight times closer, at approximately 0.12 AU, revolving Imagine how big the sun would look, look in the sky, that would be mental. around the red dwarf every 28 days. Because of such proximity, the exoplanet is likely to be tidally locked to the star, with eternal day on one side and eternal night on the other. Drastic temperature differences between the two sides probably have a major impact on the global climate on the exoplanet. Gliese 667cc gets about 10% less light than Earth does from the Sun, but since most of the light it receives is infrared, the planet gets about the same amount of energy as our planet does from the Sun, which would help retain water on its surface and result in a similar climate to Earth. Because scientists don't know for sure if the planet has an atmosphere and how thick it could be, it's impossible to predict the exact surface temperature on Gliese 667cc. If the planet does have an Earth-like atmosphere, it would transfer heat and equalize temperatures across the entire planet with a pleasant 30 degrees Celsius on the night side. Living on such a planet would be a much different experience. GJ667cc receives a faint reddish light from its star. The other two stars, Gliese 667a and b, are located at a distance of about 230 AU, much further than the distance between Pluto and the Sun, and outside the planetary system. However, the two other suns would still be seen as a pair of bright stars visible in daytime, Damn. and at night they would shine as bright as the full moon. And our Sun would appear as a distant star. Unfortunately, the nearby red dwarf is known to emit flares or intense bursts of radiation and energetic particles up to a thousand times stronger than the flares on our sun. This could be problematic for any potential life on the surface of Gliese 667cc as the planet is located close to its flaring host star. And the strong magnetism of the red dwarf may cause star spots that can reduce the energy output of the star by up to 40% for months which combined with the lack of ultraviolet light emissions would be another issue for the formation of life as we know it. Living on Gliese 667cc would be nothing like what we're used to, also because of how massive it is. The higher mass of the exoplanet means different gravitational acceleration on its surface. This world is rocky, and so the gravitational acceleration would be up to 60% higher than what we experience on Earth. A person weighing 75 kilograms on Earth would weigh as much as 120 kilograms on Gliese 667cc. In addition, a planet with higher mass can hold a more massive atmosphere, leading to higher atmospheric pressure at the planet's surface. In case it has an atmosphere similar to Earth's, the atmospheric pressure would only be a few times higher. But if the exoplanet has a Venus-like atmosphere, <laughs> the pressure could be several hundred times greater, equivalent to the water pressure several kilometers deep in Earth's oceans. Holy shit. Despite its location in a habitable zone, Gliese 667cc may not have the same conditions as Earth. Life forms on Gliese 667cc may have to adapt to fluctuating and low light, a potentially high atmospheric pressure, and frequent flares. But this doesn't mean life cannot form on such a world. We've already seen examples of remarkable life adaptability on Earth. The two other potentially habitable planets are almost identical. Gliese 667CE and Gliese 667CF are both located farther out from their planet star, meaning they receive less energy. This could make them too cold to support life as we know it. 
but unlike with GJ667CC, having a thick atmosphere would be beneficial for potential life on these planets as it would trap heat and maintain favorable temperature conditions. Spotting three such worlds in the habitable zone of the same planetary system is extremely rare, but four is almost unthinkable. According to one study, five planets in the Gliese 667C system are estimated to receive solar radiation ranging from 20 to 200% of the current exposure of Earth to the Sun, which makes them all candidates for potential habitability. But there are other factors in play. Scientists have determined that for a planet with a mass equal to Earth, the habitable zone around Gliese 667C has two boundaries. The inner boundary lies between 0.095 and 0.126 astronomical units from the star, while the outer boundary lies between 0.241 and 0.251 AU. Any planet orbiting within these distances from star C may be able to sustain life as it would have the right conditions for liquid water to exist on its surface. If a planet is too close to its star, the heat will cause water to turn into vapor and escape, making the planet uninhabitable. This happens because water vapor is a greenhouse gas which can trap heat and cause temperatures to rise to intolerable levels. Only the planets at the inner edge of the habitable zone with a larger mass are more resistant to the moist greenhouse effect. On the other hand, if a planet is too far away from its star, like the outermost Gliese 667G, it risks being covered in ice. While gases like CO2 can warm the planet and prevent this, too much CO2 can actually cool the planet down by reflecting light away. So there's a limit to how much CO2 can help warm a planet. All this stuff, right, makes you realize just how crazy it is that we had all this go for us on this planet. How did this all, how did every possibility, because there's so many possibilities that you need to like be perfect to have what we have here. It's fucking crazy. I I, this is what they, oh, when I do space reactions, this is what makes my mind just like go everywhere. Like every little detail has worked out for us here. And I don't know how that's even possible. <laughs> and that, that sort of thing sort of makes you think, wait, maybe this is the only place in the entire whatever we are in. But then at the same time, if it's so as, as large as we constantly get told, and there's so many different galaxies and then just planets and whatever, surely we can't be the only things here. But even this place where these are uh, more habitable planets, they don't seem like they are as good as maybe the title says. Obviously, they, they could have life, but maybe if they could have human life, I don't know. In 2013, astronomers made an announcement that Gliese 667c has a minimum of six planets, and there's a possibility of a seventh planet designated as GJ667ch. Okay. Although highly controversial, the exoplanet could be the smallest one found so far around star C, with a mass of at least 1.1 times that of Earth, located just between the planets C and B. Because of its mass and proximity to the parent star, the planet H would be too hot for any life to form. But planets F and E are confirmed to orbit in the habitable zone. And although the estimated location of the planet D is outside the outer edge of the habitable zone, its orbit is still uncertain. This means Gliese 667, CC, CF, CE, and possibly even CD are all potential habitable worlds. The discovery of densely packed planetary systems around M dwarf stars, such as Gliese 667c, points to the existence of numerous populations of planetary systems out there, each with several potentially habitable planets. And since M dwarfs account for more than 70% of all stars in our cosmic neighborhood, the number of such promising planetary systems in our galaxy is likely to be much greater than ever thought. I would just love to be alive when they, f or if they find, like, alive at a point when they find life, some kind of life on a planet, wherever it is. I would love to be alive for that because that would just be such a wild ass thing to know. Instead of searching no, for a single potential habitable planet among 10 stars, scientists can now focus on one star to find multiple Earth 2.0 candidates. As new and advanced telescopes are being developed, our ability to uncover the mysteries of the universe is growing at an exponential rate. What star system would you like to hear about next? Sound off in the comments. Stay tuned here to be the first to hear about the next big... Well, there we go. 
There we go. It's actually absurd to think we're alone in the universe. I mean, yeah, it's wild. It's just whenever I get into that sort of thought process, it just <laughs> it rumbles my brain. But let me know your thoughts and maybe there's a newer video on this I can check out. But God damn, it is, it is a wild ass world out there. But yeah, that's that until next time. Peace.